Many, many questions about Obama's past, even questions on his own so-called autobiography. Joining us now is Joel Gilbert, the director and writer of the documentary Dreams for My Real Father, which is number one on Amazon in documentaries for the last two weeks. Joel Gilbert, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Hi, Michael. Thanks for having me back on your show. Well, does it really matter who Obama's father really is? Why does it matter? It's because Obama sold himself to America as the multicultural ideal. He said he was a man who stood above politics because his father was a goat herder from Kenya, so he could bring people together. And the American public perceived Obama as a nice man with this inspiring family story. Uh, but in reality, as I show in my film, Dreams for My Real Father, uh, Obama has a deeply disturbing family background which he intentionally hid in order to obscure a Marxist political foundation which he got from his real biological father, Frank Marshall Davis, who was a Communist Party USA propagandist and a suspected Soviet agent. And he promoted this false family background of the Kenyan, I call it the Kenyan father fairy tale, in order to hide an agenda. And it's a totally uh, unacceptable manipulation of the electorate. If the public knew that his real father was Frank Marshall Davis, uh, he talked about in his own autobiography, Obama talks about going to Frank's house. These are parental visits from age 9 to 18, and he shows up at Occidental College as a committed revolutionary Marxist. Uh, so based on his own accounts, there is no doubt that Frank Marshall Davis, uh, this Communist Party Marxist propagandist, indoctrinated Obama with a Marxist worldview during his formative years. Your film shows evidence that the Kenyan Obama is not his real father. Well, actually, I covered that in Trickle Down Tyranny. Well, first of all, we demonstrate all the evidence that Obama's official story of this improbable love between his mother and the Kenyan goat herder student, foreign student, uh, Barack Obama, uh, is not true. He claimed that his family, the loving Obama family, split up when the father went to Harvard when he was three years old. It's completely false. The uh, mother had applied for uh, university and attended university in Seattle, Washington, when Obama was only three weeks old, while the Kenyan remained in Hawaii. Uh, so his story is false. Next, we have actual photos of an intimate relationship between Obama's mother, Ann Dunham, and Frank Marshall Davis uh, from the house where Frank lived. And he, he then sold these very explicit photos to men's magazines. Uh, she modeled for him in the nude. Uh, and then we have Obama when he returns from Indonesia at age nine. His mother drops him off and essentially goes back to Indonesia telling the grandfather, uh, I'm going back to Indonesia, but remember the 65-year-old communist pornographer guy that I used to take those dirty photos with, uh, he should really raise Barry while I'm away. So uh, Obama goes to Davis's house regularly from age nine to 18, and uh, we have all this evidence that shows he was the biological father and became the ideological father, which is even more frightening. So Obama is what we call a red diaper baby. Barack Obama is a red diaper baby, meaning the child of a Communist Party USA member. This is a known phenomenon in the radical left where uh, the leadership, for example, of the SDS and the Weather Underground Marxist terrorist organization were all children of Communist Party USA members. By the way, David Axelrod, his mother was a red journalist in New York, just like Obama's father was a uh, communist journalist. Uh, so Axelrod is also a red diaper baby. What did you say to the reporters at the press club a few weeks ago? Well, I talked about the journalist creed. The journalist creed is a code of ethics for the profession of journalism. It's like the Hippocratic Oath that doctors have. So I said that the, you know, if doctors decided to ignore the Hippocratic Oath, we'd all get sick. Uh, in this case, because the uh, American journalists refused to cover Obama's background and are covering up this false narrative, I believe America is becoming infected with Marxism. Uh, because the journalists refused to cover Obama's uh, past, Obama was able to bamboozle uh, middle-class America with this laughable illusion that he was the son of a goat herder who stood above politics. He got away with these silly, meaningless slogans like, hope and change, and yes, we can. And no one even thought even to look into what he was really saying. So I told them journalists are public trustees, that uh, suppression of the news is indefensible. 
and that the journalist creed requires them to be unbiased and unafraid. So I accused all the major American television networks, cable news networks, Washington Post, New York Times, of gross violations of the journalist creed. Uh, Americans look to journalists and television news, print news media, to get the truth. And if the mainstream and beyond media fails in that effort to provide information, uh, the entire country uh, suffers greatly. And we're suffering from a president of the United States that was elected on a false background and has an agenda irreconcilable with American values. Uh, anyone can see the full film. It's in my, uh, all the evidence is in my DVD. It's available at my website, obamasrealfather.com, and also on Amazon. You're at the Republican convention now. How has the movie been received there? Well, we've been screening the film uh, three or four times a day, and uh, a lot of people heard of the film but didn't really quite understand the whole the whole uh, concept, how it all came together. So I've been sitting in the audiences, even though I've seen the film, obviously, many, many times, and uh, the reactions are just, people are astonished and amazed, and they, they just can't believe that this has not come out before in the public. And part of it is because Obama went to a great extent to misdirect everybody, the Kenyan goat herder, the father from Kenya, the inspiring family story, and everybody bought into it. So it's psychologically, it has quite an astonishing impact to see that when, when people realize this was all a farce. So I've been doing a question and answer period, like a panel after every, uh, every screening, and the people are saying, you know, how can we get this out? How can we get more people to see it? And I just say, tell all your friends to go to obamasrealfather.com. Well, what are the reactions like in the rest of the country? Uh, I get uh, lots of emails, uh, maybe 50, 100 a day. And uh, typically, uh, this is from people who have seen the movie, and they are just outraged that they never heard of this before, that somehow... Uh, the mainstream media is not covering this film. And it seems to me uh, the feedback I get from the media, the, they tell me, listen, if somebody else covers this, we'll cover them covering it, but we're afraid to be the first. I think for them to uh, take this as a scoop, it's going to be an admission that they didn't do their job. They failed for four or five years to even send a reporter to Hawaii to figure out whether Obama's uh, story of his early childhood and how he grew up and who raised him uh, is false. They never even bothered to check it out. I've been to Hawaii twice. I've met with retired Honolulu Police Department detectives. I've had access to files. I've met with Frank Marshall Davis's friends, uh, Obama's friends, and a very easy, clear picture emerged uh, that Obama, that the Kenyan goat herder was a sham marriage at the time to cover up this illicit affair. And then Obama later used it in his political career uh, the Kenyan goat herding father to obscure his connection to Frank Marshall Davis. So Obama has a very deeply disturbing family background, and if the public knew, they would realize how this affected his politics and his agenda for America. How is Obama's campaign different this time around? Well, what's different is uh, he was being very general and vague about uh, hope and change, and everybody just kind of read into it what they wanted. No one really knew what change meant from the socialist point of view. Change is a code word for a revolution to end capitalism. Uh, now his Marxist ideology is just coming through loud and clear. His entire campaign is based on you know, the top 1%, uh, the breathtaking greed of a few. He talks about how the rich don't pay their fair share. Well, anybody can just Google it and see that the top income brackets do pay up to 40% of income, and it kind of goes down from there. So his entire uh, campaign is based on this lie, this absurd notion that uh, we don't have uh, a fair tax system. But this is the classic Marxist rhetoric that Obama would have gotten during this indoctrination from his real father, Frank Marshall Davis, uh, who was trained in the 1930s in communism in Chicago, that there's an evil straw man who's keeping the proletariat down, and therefore you must vote or uh, support Obama because some evil straw man is, uh, is keeping them from being successful or improving their station in life. This is classic Marxism. So Obama's new line is, of course, now he says let's, uh, he wants to help middle-class families, helping middle-class families. In reality, socialist economies don't have a middle class. They have one big lower class, with a handful of political elites who control the wealth. So in reality, 
Obama's agenda is a war against the middle class meant to eliminate the middle class. Uh, for Obama and his comrades, the middle class are just pawns. They, they cling to their guns and religion. That's why for them, uh, socialist uh, national health care is simply a socialist tool to eliminate the middle and upper classes. So for Obama, uh, poor quality, long waits, and high taxes in this national health care uh, doesn't matter. It's just a socialist tool. Uh, for Obama in the next term, uh, the middle class's health care is going to be given away to poor and illegals. Middle class's employers are going to be taxed and regulated out of business. And the middle class retirement will evaporate into a bankrupt socialist state. And Obama will achieve what he wants, which is to make America irreversibly socialist without anybody ever realizing how it happened. So I say to everybody, to understand Obama's plans for America, look no further than a communist Frank Marshall Davis, Obama's real biological and ideological father. Where can we read more? Yeah, please, everyone, go to obamasrealfather.com. You can see the trailer. There's lots of breaking news updates, uh, as well as ordering the DVD. obamasrealfather.com. Joel Gilbert, thanks again for being on the Savage Nation. Michael, thanks so much for having me. I look forward to talking to you again.